Has everyone come through Tuesday night okay and back in training today? Yeah, no, no one's reported any knocks or anything. Um, a couple have been ill, a couple of the younger lads, um, but yeah, nothing that's going to affect the first team. And after a journey like that, that's that, and the effort that was put in, that that's got to be a relief. Uh, not a relief. I just it's just pleasing. Um, it's a long way to go. You know that every time you go up there, it's you know, every, every everybody that goes up there knows it's a long way. It's um, but I thought it was a good performance. The performance reflected the night. Really, it was it was an ugly type sort of night. And the last 10-15 minutes, they made it. They made it that way. They loaded the box, and I think they had five up front. Had the centre half up front at the end, and uh, we defended really well. Storm Dennis coming in as well on the forecast. How much could it be a case of needing more of the same, not just in terms of the commitment and all of those things, but also um, style of play if need be? Well, I actually thought the conditions. We actually had to play some good football. You know, we got in two or three times, had a one-on-one. -on -one. Had some good chances through some good football. So you do, you know, if you just toss it up in the air when it is blowing a gale, it is a game of chance. We don't want it to turn into a game of chance. We want it to be the best team wins. Um, so there's not a lot we can do about the conditions. But as regards to the mentality and the resilience, I expect that every game. That, that, that shouldn't matter on the weather or what stage of the season it is. If it's game one or game 46, they're all worth the same amount of points. Will Boyle obviously came back into the side, did a job, played his part in a clean sheet. As a defender, if you're not playing as regularly as you'd like, how difficult is it to come in and hit the ground running? Uh, with him, it's not a surprise. He's been absolutely magnificent out of the team. Um, does his work, comes in, helps the lads, doesn't, doesn't let his ego get in the way of what's happening on the pitch. The team have been going well. So he's, 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 he's not stupid, he's seen that. So you can either sulk about it and throw your toys out the pram and blame everyone else, or you can do what he's done and have the right frame of mind, the right mentality, do extras. So he's been in the gym doing more, he does extras out in the, uh, after training. Because then when he does get a chance, he knows he's ready. Whereas some, some people in football, not just at, you know, I'm not saying at this club, but in, in general, some people go the other way where they blame everyone else. And when they do get the opportunity, they're not ready. So they, they passes them by. So that, that doesn't surprise me. That um, And to be fair to Greaves, he Greaves is reacting the right way as well. So that's what you want. You want that positive influence on the group. You just don't want 11 trying hard. You want 20, 21, because they'll all be involved at some point. Orient, over the last five games, I think they've picked up 10 points. That's the same as Swindon. What does that say about their form at the moment? So they've picked up. I think they lost one in six. Um, so they have they've had some really good performances, really good uh, some good results. So it'll be a tough game. Obviously, we... It'd be a completely different game to the one we played on the first day of the season, but they they played a different shape then. They've gone back to one, one more three three, but it's a really attacking front three. It's not two wingers. It's you know th almost three centre forwards on the pitch. Um, so they have got and they've got good delivery from wide areas as well. So technically they look good because they're a team full of left footers. I don't think I've ever seen so many left footers in a team in my life. So they they look a good team. And their run seems to have coincided with Ross Embleton as well being named head coach on a, on a permanent basis. So I suppose they've got a bit of stability, which as a club they've needed. Yeah, I think Ross has done well. Obviously, he came in in difficult circumstances, then they changed it, then they've gone back. So that bit of continuity now, the players know what's going on. Um, and sometimes you, you do need that. Players are anxious. They, they want to know who's in charge. They want some sort of routine. And obviously, Ross has, has got that with them. They know who's in charge. He, he knows the players and he's got them playing well. You're playing in white this weekend, obviously the Holly Gazard um, Trust uh, match. Has the kit man forgiven you for training in white as well in advance of the game? It's, it's, if we lose the game, it'd be nothing to do with the kit. Um, you know, we wear different kits, different years, so no, this um, James, no, James won't be because the weather's not great either for it. But uh, it, yeah, it, it's it's more like you said. I think it's a good thing that the club are doing, working with a, a good charity. Obviously, came about through horrible circumstances, but trying to make uh, trying to make the world a better place off the back of it. The likes of Chris Clements and Connor Thomas have been out with illness and injury. Um, Chris Clements, how, how close is he in terms of being able to be match ready? Obviously, you said on Tuesday he's well again. Yeah, Clem trained on uh, Friday and Monday, but obviously haven't been out for nearly two and a half, three weeks. A couple of days training, we didn't feel was going to be enough to particularly with the travelling involved and everything like that. So we left him at home, he, he'll come back into it now. Connor, 
we'll have to wait and see. What is the problem with Connor? He felt his rib again. Um, he got quite a bad tackle quite early on against uh, Scunthorpe. So it's with the bodies that we've got, we don't feel we need to take too many risks for people. So obviously, people came in and done well in the team on Tuesday night. Thank you. Good luck. Cheers, Michael. You mentioned the, the late night, obviously very late night, Wednesday, early early morning Tuesday. Uh, did, have you done anything different? Obviously, give the players a rest day. Will you do anything different between now and the game? Or was it just now back to normal from the morning? Yeah, it's back to normal. Um, yeah, the players have had a day off, so I'd imagine they've all had a decent line. Um, you don't particularly. There, there wasn't many of them asleep on the bus after the game because players don't sleep after games. But you know, they, they had their they had their rest, and it's up to them to be professional to have done whatever they needed to do. So some of them will have gone to the gym, done a cool down. Some of them don't need to do that. That's a personal preference. But they're, they're, we, we're not doing anything different now. Obviously, it'd be a light today, training wise. It'd be more of a tactical day. So we'll debrief from Tuesday night what we did well and what we didn't do well uh, and then go through things that we need to work on moving into the uh, game on Saturday. Yeah, four or five hours together on the coach after a, a good away win, was it Was it a good atmosphere on the coach? Was everyone just staying quiet? It was, it was a bit louder than what it was on Saturday. Um, now the players, the players, you've got to enjoy your wins, they're hard to come by. I say it all, I tell the players a lot, it's, it's difficult to win a game of football. So you, you, you know, the refs put eight minutes of injury time up and we, like I said, they've got four or five up front in the end and they're, they're scrapping for their lives. So you need to enjoy those moments because we left at half nine in the morning and didn't get back till four o'clock in the morning. It was a long day. So you know, enjoy your win. But once we've once we've shown the clips in, in half an hour, we'll, uh, that's it, parked. Move on to the next one. Yeah, you had lunch with Chris Beeps last week in an NMA meeting after the game. He, he was talking about dark hearts, which is probably something that all clubs do when they're trying to protect the lead a little bit, but you also said about Cheltenham crying poverty, didn't really understand how some of the names that are in the team have been afforded at Cheltenham. What, what do you make of those comments? I find it... Um, I'm not quite sure what he means by dark hearts, to be honest, because the wind was blowing the ball off the spot. So when, it, when, he blew the, when the ball blew there, goalie off the spot from four times, I didn't hear anyone moaning. The ref put eight minutes up. So don't want to get too involved. With regard to the budget, can tell you what our budget is exactly. So it's, I don't want to get too involved with it. It's, it was a good performance. We've played for 100 minutes, they've had one shot on target. So I think we deserve to win again. Yeah, you've got, I think, nine at home out of 15 now and six away. I know your, your waveforms are very good for most of this season, but psychologically, is that a good position to be in having nine of 15 remaining games and being seventh? I know you haven't achieved anything yet, but psychologically. We've given ourselves a platform, we've given ourselves a chance. Um, so statistically, you, you want to play at home because the facts say that you're more likely to win at home than what you are away from home. It doesn't mean anything in every individual game, it's different circumstances, but mantras, as it always should be and always will be, is win the next game. So like I said, we'll park up Tuesday night this morning and then we'll move on to the next one. Um, and that's the key. So yes, we've given ourselves an opportunity. On paper, it looks good, but you know, on paper, we should be where we are. So we're... We need to show that sort of underdog mentality and, and, and add the quality that we've got in, in the team. Yeah, listening to Ruben after the game on Tuesday, he, he seems very honest and aware of the fact that he's not going to be able to just come straight in and play 90 minutes, 90 minutes. Does that, does that help a lot when he, he's, he's sort of experienced enough to know his limitations because he has had a couple of setbacks? Before? It's not up to him whether he plays every minute anyway. But no, it's, it's listen, we pushed him um, probably more than we had to or more than we wanted to. And, and he broke down, but you look at the forwards we've got in the in the in the, the options that we've got now. You know, so Luke Varney, at the age that he is, he didn't want to come out of the team, but with the two long away trips, but he came on and affected the game. Like I just said to Paul, that everyone's going to be everyone's going to be used. So now it really is leave your own agenda. It's about whoever's on the pitch at any any one moment. Those eleven players, they're the they're the most important ones. And if you're not on one of those eleven, you still have a part to play. Um, Ruben's fully aware of that because of his experience. Reg is fully aware of that because of experience. Like I said, Boylo is probably an old head on young shoulders. But we have got a tight knit group, and I think they realise that that is one person isn't going to get winners or losers a game. Now it is a real collective, and we're going to need everyone if we want to achieve what we want to achieve. Yeah, the only other player that hasn't been mentioned who's not been involved at the moment is John C. Smith. Is he is he getting there? Is he still? Yeah, no, he's training. He's fully training now. Um, so obviously we had that period of where he was ill and his contract had run out, but we weren't going to do anything until he was considered uh, 
almost like a, a protocol of return to play. He is that now, so we've just got to get him sharp. And, but like I said, it's competition for places now.